Hello and welcome to the very first episode of our new franchise, Planet Zoo Let's Play. So, if you're new to the channel, my name is Panda, and this is actually the second franchise zoo, or the second zoo in like our, our franchise, I guess, <laughs> if you did happen to miss the first season. So, this new zoo that we are starting with, uh, obviously, you know, we start with the 40 thousand dollars but we do have quite a few conservation credits from our last zoo so if you want to see one where we're starting from absolutely nothing then i would suggest watching the previous series obviously the early videos are not as high quality as these ones because it was my very first series but i think those um i think they're still holding up okay so you can always go back and check that if you want but if you're here for this zoo and you're interested, this zoo is called Onderheim Zoo, which you probably saw at the beginning there. It is an African desert zoo, so um, yeah, I think it goes really well. It just happens to go very well with the new pack coming out. I wanted to do essentially a summer-themed zoo for the kind of summer into fall months, so that's where the idea originally came from, and then we got the Africa pack, and I'm so excited <laughs> that uh, it all kind of worked out really well. So, Onderheim actually, I mean, very, very roughly, very roughly, because I needed to make it like kind of sound like a name, <laughs> uh, translates to Underground Secret, and exactly what that Underground Secret is, we're not going to get to very soon. Um, it's going to be quite a bit later on in the series, but you can look forward to that, and that's just kind of, I don't know, just in case you were curious about where the name came from, but not relevant at this point. <laughs> uh, what we're starting with here is our entrance area, which is kind of like Moroccan themed, I suppose, like that North, we're using a lot of the North African uh, decorative stuff that came <laughs> uh, with the with the new pack. So this zoo in general, uh, if you did watch my previous zoo, this one is going to be a little bit more decorative and gimmicky than the previous one was. And uh, I'm just kind of, I'm doing that to sort of try to expand out my own design skills and that sort of thing. So have a little bit more fun with it. <laughs> so I have a few, you know, I have a few themes in mind and it's all going to be, you know, African desert sort of themed i'm thinking we can do i mean we have this area which is kind of moroccan i want to go full on with the moroccan themed a little bit further from here um it's just going to kind of get more and more colorful and bright and have those bright blues and all of that fun stuff um and then i'm also thinking you know maybe we'll do an egyptian like an ancient egypt area uh with the pyramids and some cool stuff like that and then we can do uh the classic safari as well I think would be nice. We might as well if we're doing an African zoo. I want to do an African safari. <laughs> I know it's very difficult, but you know, we got to have that in there. I can't not. Uh, so yeah, what we're kind of building here is just our entrance area. Um, this tower, yeah, I never ended up finishing or like, you know, filming, <laughs> finishing that tower because I kept changing it a lot. Um, it was a little bit tricky to make, but overall, the I'm just using mostly the plaster pieces here and some of the new you know, the new ones with the holes, I think, just make the plaster so much more enjoyable to work with. I really, I really like that. And I kind of like this new tile flooring. I wish there was a a more colorful or more patterned tile flooring that also came with this pack. But there was only this one. So I know you can kind of cover the floor with the tile. Um, and you can probably do it in a way that doesn't quite clip the visitor's feet. So <laughs> I might do that when we have the larger... Um, the larger, more colorful area later on. But here, so I put in already a info center, the food center behind us, and then this one here is a gift shop. It's, um, I think it's something in balloons, but they say it's a gift shop. So I kind of skipped through a little bit of this just because it got a little bit tedious, but I wanted to, uh, I had this inspiration photo from Pinterest, and it was of this Moroccan, you know, obviously they sold the plates and stuff, but of this Moroccan plate shop and it was just covered in these beautifully decorated plates and there aren't very many different patterns uh, that you can get on the plates but I did kind of play with the colors and just kind of slapping them all over the place and uh, I like how this one turned out. I, I, yeah, I think it's a cool little shop. I might have to play with it a little bit more in uh, some of the other shops that we put into this these areas and try to do the really crowded like colorful look <laughs> to them. I'm not very good at it but I, I like how the plate shop turned out so might have to play with that a little bit more. I wanted to do maybe a little bit more in this area, but I was struggling to find like tables and stuff to like stack with plates and items. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's just not really very many like table pieces <laughs> in this game. I, I was thinking about it and I never really had tried to like find table pieces before. So I'm not totally sure. But uh, over here now we are 
starting to work on our meerkat habitat. So there's this little indoor area. It's not very big uh, for the guests, but it does have the milkshake shop there so they can get a little bit of food and I think milkshakes also provide some hydration. I'm not sure, um, but we have that there anyway. I think it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a food shop. Um, well, maybe it's a drink shop. I can't remember, <laughs> but yeah, so that's in there for the guests right off the bat. And that's going to be the little indoor viewing area as well as um, a little bit of an indoor shelter area for the actual meerkats as well. As for um, kind of the other animals and stuff that we're probably going to be putting into this zoo, I do want to stick with, uh, for at least the next while, the desert animals. I'm also thinking we'll focus on Africa. Um, it doesn't. I don't think we're going to only do the animals in the new pack because there are quite a few de like grassland and desert animals from Africa that were in the base game as well. So <laughs> I think that's going to give us a lot of opportunity to you know play with a lot of different animals. And yeah, I just kind of picked the meerkat as the first one because I thought they were super cute. And we do a lot of, we watch them for quite a while um, after the uh, after the time lapse is over. So you'll be able to get a really good view of them um, once they're in there. But I thought some of these little, um, these little decals and stuff are super cute. The ones that did come with the new pack, those little meerkats. And the <laughs> there's a few other ones too that I didn't end up using, but we might use them for um, the other animals. I think there's like a rhino one and, and all of that. One thing that I did think about while I was building this that I kind of forgot to um, do in the live part, so we might have to, maybe we'll do it in the next episode, but uh, we have those new habitat cameras, and I thought it would be kind of cool to, like, you know, work on putting those in a little bit more, and, like, especially when our zoo's a bit bigger, so we could have some areas, I think, where one of the screens will show into the habitat, but, like, you know, we're near the habitat, so you're just, like, encouraged to go closer to the habitat, if that makes sense, or like an advertising point, essentially. Um, so I'm not sure how that works, but we might have to play with that a little bit in the next episode. Because I do, I have been playing around a little bit more with using the billboards as advertisements and kind of, you know, creating some custom uh, info boards and stuff like that for the animals that basically just serve as uh, advertising for actual habitats. <laughs> but I don't know about the video camera thing. I assume that can also kind of advertise for, for habitats. And I think that's a super cute idea and a pretty neat feature that they included in there. So here we have our little fountain area in the center. Um, spoiler for the end, I end up getting rid of this fountain in the end, um, like well after the time lapse <laughs> in the real time part, because I, I don't like how guests just walk through the fountains. Like, I don't know, it's, it kind of drives me absolutely nuts. Oh, the other thing too, um, I don't know, you might have noticed me struggling with it a little bit at the beginning. Uh, it might have gone by too quickly to notice. But the default entrance, that building that's um, at the front there, I don't, like, Can let me know if you know of any way to get rid of that. Uh, ideally, after starting the zoo, I mean, hopefully it's not like, oh, you could have gotten rid of it when you set up the zoo <laughs> and it's too late now. I mean, even if that's the case, let me know so I know for the future. But I don't like, I don't like it. I don't think it looks good with this one. And I wish I could just like kind of, you know, expand my own entrance so it didn't look like they were coming from nowhere. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe it's just stuck there. I'm not sure why <laughs> it's there or if I can get rid of it in any way. Um, I might just have to, you know, kind of ignore it and face only the other way for screenshots and stuff. But yeah, if you know of how to get rid of it and I'm just being dumb and can't figure it out, uh, please let me know. <laughs> but so here we're just kind of working on the staff area. Uh, pretty straightforward back here. I'm just kind of covering up the buildings. I might go back through here and kind of decorate it up a little bit for the staff. But generally speaking, as long as my staff areas are hidden, I don't really care that much about making them look super nice. <laughs> Maybe the staff would appreciate it if they looked a little bit nicer, but also I don't know if they would really appreciate it all that much. But uh, once that was completed, I started working on the actual meerkat habitat. So I used quite a few inspiration photos for this, and I think what I something else that I want to kind of focus on the whole time making this zoo is using actual photos of like enclosures and stuff as inspiration to see you know, what exactly do their t like territories usually look like? And, um, you know, what is it that they put into these habitats that makes sense for the animal, make it a little bit more realistic? And something that I had noticed in the meerkat ones is that they their habitats are always very, like, piled with dirt and um, essentially very, you know, undulating like this one is. So I just kind of went in, used the roughen tool and made a whole bunch of hills and stuff for them so that they can, you know, I'm sure a part of it is they mess with the dirt as well, but this just kind of, I think adds to it so much. It's so much better than a flat habitat. I don't know why 
I didn't really play much with the terrain tools um, in my habitats previously, but I like how this looks. I think it looks so much more realistic <laughs> just with the ground, like, you know, coming up and down like that. So uh, I thought that worked out pretty well. And then just that little shelter, I mean, pretty straightforward. They don't even really need it. There's another shelter back here too, but in case they wanted a shelter <laughs> a little bit further away, there's just that little rock structure there that I made. Um, I thought it looked, you know, decent. It doesn't look great, but <laughs> I think it looks okay. And then, yeah, just a bunch of rocks and fallen trees and that sort of thing back here as well. Um, a few plants, but they don't need very many plants. I don't think they even really like very many plants, so... It's pretty barren. It's the desert. <laughs> it fits. Um, I love this map, too. Like, even just kind of looking in the background now, like, I love how it has the hills in the background, so it's not just, like, an endless... Um, you know, desolate wasteland of nothingness back there. So I like I like how that looks. I think this is going to be such a cool zoo with such an awesome background. I am so excited to, you know, continue on with this one. I'm very motivated to hopefully, you know, create something really cool with this zoo. So as I'm just kind of detailing the inside of this building, uh, basically just kind of, you know, repeating what I did outside using a lot of these plaster pieces uh, just for decoration. I know these are supposed to be kind of like windows but <laughs> we're just using them as you know decor on the inside which is fine lots of screens there so later on um, I did notice that some of the screens that I put in cannot be education screens um, because they're too far away from the meerkat habitat even those ones on the far wall um, from the habitat there that are like facing the habitat they're too far away <laughs> so uh, I end up changing those to just kind of viewing screens and you'll see at the at the very end um, I end up doing the uh, animal feature thing again. So we are featuring each of our meerkats and their names and <laughs> and all of that. And I think it's just kind of a cute little touch there, but that is pretty much it for the time-lapse. So let's just jump into the real time part. All right, so here is our cute little entrance area. Oh, I love this. Okay, so I think, I think this kind of worked out uh, fairly well. Um, I like how it looks. Obviously, we can still, I can still do quite a bit of detailing work in here. But what do you guys think of this so far? I think it turned out really nice. Uh, I'm not sure why there's a hole there. Um, it's very strange. Actually, there seems to be a hole, a gap all the way through here. Okay, well, I'll look into that after as well. <laughs> um, the next step here is going to be to hire some staff and then get our meerkats. So. So far, I think every shop we put in came with a vendor, so that's good. Um, oh, I actually need a way to connect this staff path back to the main path as well, don't I? Hmm, where can I do that? Maybe right here would be a good place? Okay, there we go, that's better. So, path right there just kind of goes right through. Um, gonna look like they're walking through it, but, you know, that's how doors work in this game, so... <laughs> I am A-OK -okay with that. Um, but, yeah, okay, so... Got a few vendors already. Let's take a look at what we need for staff members. Um, obviously, we need a caretaker at the beginning. Um, we will need a keeper for our meerkats. And we'll need a mechanic for the barriers. And a vet. Ooh, you know what? I wonder... I didn't put in an education talk point, but I wonder if it's best to just do that right away. Um, otherwise, I'm probably going to forget to do it anyway. So... Um, where is that? Facilities, right? Down here. Ooh, and a habitat web camera. Oh, I think that would be fun. Okay. Um, let's just put it right in the center-ish. Or no, should we put it center or to the... S yeah, let's just do it straight in the center. Why not? Um, there we go. Perfect. And let's make this for the... Oh, right, we don't have meerkats in there yet, but we will. Um, and let's do a, another staff, an educator. Um... Cool. Did I get the vet? I can't remember. Who's this? Okay, let's just play for a second. Let them go to the ground. <laughs> um, we also need to change their salaries all the way down as low as we can. Okay, perfect. So everybody is at their bare minimum for wages. Sorry guys, this is a, um, not a very rich zoo currently, but you know, we'll get better. <laughs> not that I ever raise their wages anyway, but they don't have to know that. Um, okay, so next step is... I thought we had a trade center. Um, oh, did I not put in a trade center? Okay, well that was not smart. Uh, so there's a bunch of money. <laughs> this is why we save a little bit of money, because we're gonna forget the important things. Perfect, I'll deal with the walls later. So we have a trade center, let's see if... I don't know if we're gonna get lucky um, or not, but... 
I don't know what it's going to be like for... Actually, you know what? There might be a lot. I'm going to be um, optimistic and say there might be a lot of them because everybody currently has them in their zoo. Yeah, there's quite a few. Okay. This isn't too bad. So we have a bronze female, bronze male, whose fertility is zero. I don't know... Hmm. I think fertility zero doesn't mean that they can't have kids, right? It just means they're less likely to. Um... Maybe it's, well, 2,000. Oh my goodness. Okay, this one's definitely worth it. I'm definitely going to buy her. We have 3,000. She's 1,000. Yeah, okay. I'll adopt that one. Um, actually, let's take a look at their Zoopedia entry first. Just to make sure we got this. Okay, so the meerkat is a species of social mongoose that is found in the complex underground burrows of the savannas and semi-deserts of South Africa. It lives in family packs and is considered to be eusocial meaning it is highly socially organized and pack members have strongly defined roles within their group. Okay, cool. So we're going to have like alphas and stuff, I think, for this one. Uh, meerkats have a flat pointed head and a colored face with black eyes and ears, um, a molted pattern of gray and yellow fur on their back, and a pointed black tipped tail. Meerkats move on all fours, but assume distinctive stands on their hind legs when alert. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Uh, the meerkat has a head body length of 9.6 to 14 inches and weighs between 21.7 and 33.95 ounces. Uh, females tend to be heavier than males and they're not endangered. So, obviously, yes, we're in, we're in Africa, we're in the desert, uh, that's all good. So 2 to 20, so or 2 to 30, up to 20 fe males, 20 females. So we'll start with one male, one female, um, and then we'll go from there. Uh, an alpha me female in a matriarchal society that's cool yeah so i'm guessing only yeah so only one female is going to be able to breed anyway so maybe it makes sense to have a few males um if there are some more good ones right we got a female but yeah we're gonna have to get a few good males i don't know they both have zero fertility that's so interesting i don't think do they come from the same place yeah they do so they probably just got a bad batch i'll wait a little bit um and make sure that we can get another uh, second meerkat before I put these ones in and yeah in the meantime I will fix up the inside of this building here okay here they come I ended up getting one of the cheaper uh, guys who didn't have any uh, fertility so we'll see I'll get another one um, as time goes on I just didn't want to wait any longer uh, more of these guys we'll see if they have a baby anyway look at them how cute okay wait 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 we gotta take a closer look here oh look at them running Okay, I really want to see them burrow. Oh, this is so cute. I should actually double check that they can't get out. <laughs> um, okay, wait, let's just double check. Make sure they can't get out. Make sure that they can explore everywhere. Yeah, okay, they can go in there. They can pretty much go everywhere. Not really on these logs and stuff, but that's okay. They're just for decoration. Perfect. All right, where are they? There he is. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, look at him. I love these guys. <laughs> I want to see you burrow, please. Burrow for me. Hmm? No? Okay. Well, we'll watch. We'll, we'll, you know, they seem a little bit shy. <laughs> okay, I also, we should also double check that they have everything they need in the habitat. Um, okay, so they need a bit more soil, but the plant coverage is good. Um, and then obviously enrichment, but we need to do some research on them for that. So, oh, look, we've got so many people already. Oh, I probably didn't change the uh, entry fee, did I? Yes, okay, let's do $5 and $4 to start with. Um, we'll leave it at just open in the afternoon so that um, I'll do lighting later. <laughs> I think I might do lighting off camera. I think lighting's a little bit tough to do on camera, but uh, let's just fix this really quick. Add some more soil. Um, oh, the soil actually looks kind of nice. Okay. Um, let's add it like maybe in back here. Um, a little bit through here and on the parts that are not raised because I feel like the raised parts would be more sandy. Um, this bottom part can be more soily. There we go. I think that's oh, almost perfect. There we go. Almost there. Perfect. There we go. Now they are completely happy other than their enrichment, um, which we can actually... Do we have a vet research center? No, we don't. So we'll need to get a research center before we can actually do any research <laughs> to make them happier, but hopefully very soon that'll happen because if we click play, maybe these people will start giving us some money. <laughs> uh, we'll also do the meerkat talk in January, so that's open. 
And we'll set a bunch of these guys to the meerkat. So I'm thinking we'll do um, like these ones here, the habitat education boards, one, two, and I should have done it opposite. Oh well. Uh, these ones are all the habitat education boards. And I'm thinking these ones we can do um, kind of like what we try to do in Naropa City Zoo, um, but put the meerkat, like uh, the animal, we give them a name. Well, they have a name. Um, we take a little photo of them and have this be kind of like a, you know, highlight of who they are sort of thing. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me. Something else that I want to do for this series is put the animal lifespan on longer. Um, yeah, okay. So let's do... Reduce animal raging. Ooh, wow, you can reduce it by five. Um, let's go with three times slower. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, let's do that for now. Let me know what you think. Basically, I just want to, like, I don't know. I don't need to rush getting babies, and I kind of want to, you know, have this series be a little bit more focused on our animals, and, you know, we can get to know each of them individually and that sort of thing as well. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of what I'm thinking, but let's see, what do we have? Um, yeah, fertility zero, social zero, but they have a pack mate, but not a current actual mate. Okay, that's interesting. Um, where is she? Oops, I can just probably do that. There she is. Oh, look, they've made some holes! <laughs> oh, is she gonna go in? Oh, there she goes! <laughs> oh, how fun. Okay, why is she a beta animal? Hmm, interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Maybe we need more female meerkats too. If she's gonna automatically be a beta animal, I don't know. Hey, wait. I want to see where where she gonna pop out. Oh, she popped out of that hole. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. I like how they stay here too. I wonder if they're gonna make more of them. It adds quite a bit to the um, environment. I think if they start to make more uh, more burrows and that kind of thing. But it looks like the guests are loving it. We've got tons of guests already. Wow. Look at that. We are quite full. Um, oh, this is ugly. Um, <laughs> I like moved this because I wasn't sure why it was telling me that um, there was no connection to the pathway, but there was. Um, so I think that's fine. Yeah, they're walking through the wall. That's all good. I'm thinking this little spot here, we can do a nice little plant uh, display there. And yeah, I think some of these areas I might just fill. Actually, I'm thinking we need some ATMs. We also need some education boards. Um, so I think I might do some of that like in here. Um, but I know that this area is going to end up getting super crowded once we have a lot of people coming through our zoo. Do they walk through the fountain? I want to know. They do walk through the fountain. Dang. I hate that. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is there like, um, actually, is there a setting for that? Um, disable scenery collision? Stops rides and stations. Uh, terrain. Allows terrain to be manipulated. Animal navigation. Avatar zoo visitors, okay, yeah. I guess for our guests, they can always walk through scenery objects. Um, yeah, maybe I'll fix that later then. I kind of like the fountain, but also it doesn't have to be here. Um, I was thinking maybe we'll do some cute water features on this tunnel exiting um, anyway, so maybe we don't need it, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. We got our meerkats, I love that. I also would like to get some um, exhibition buildings or some exhibit buildings in here. I wonder, we almost have enough for one actually. I wonder if it's going to be worth getting one sooner rather than later uh, for that extra bit of money. And we could do it... Where do we put them? Maybe we could put them here. So, like, yeah, maybe one over here. That might make sense. Um, I want to change these to meerkat too, though, just so that we're showing, showing off our meerkat. Or maybe that one would be the uh, exhibit building here. Okay, wait. Let's see how much they cost. Uh, small. Um, okay, three thousand. We have just over that, um, so we'll be spending all of our money. Uh, but I don't think that's the end of the world. What happens if we put it in here? Is there like, is it actually attaching to the path? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Oh no, not quite. Um. Okay, let's see. I'll put it here, and we will get rid of the walls. Uh, on. Okay, perfect. Love that. Let's copy one of these bins over, and we'll put it right here on the corner, and that should cover both sides. So we are still making money. Look at that. We have a thousand, even though we bought them, and we bought the uh, enclosure as well. So 
I think that's going well so far. Oh, look at them throw the money in. Okay, so I think the next thing to do when the money rolls in is to put a second exhibit, actually. So I'm thinking, I actually like how this looks uh, here, so put one mirrored on the other side as well. Um, I could probably fix this up a little bit too, but oh no, I forgot to put trash bins in. So this is why you always save money. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm just the only idiot who does this. This is why I always save a little bit of money because I can promise you I will always forget to put something important uh, in the zoo. And in this case, today it's trash bins. Oh my gosh, I hate I hate watching them walk through this. It's very annoying. Um, okay, we are at two thousand dollars now, so we just need to wait until we hit just over three so that we can get the other. Um, other exhibit, but maybe we can take a look at the animals that we have. So this one, um, I obviously want the African ones because this is our desert Africa zoo. Um, what else is... So we got the Goliath beetle. Um, on my list here it shows that we also could do the giant tiger land snail or the puff adder. I'm gonna save save the scarab um, for later. We're gonna make a whole Thing around the scarab, <laughs> which I'm super excited about. Uh, so let's take a look at the giant tiger land snail. That actually sounds super fun. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, these guys are relatively cheap, actually. That's nice. Um, do we have ones that are opposite? Yeah, okay. Oh, they have to be inspired. Refresh. Oh. Well, that was fun. <laughs> no, why? Uh, still no luck. We either have only a female giant tiger land snail, or we have only male puff adders. I actually really want the giant tiger land snail. I think I would rather have that. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on there, and then as soon as we can get one male and one female... Um, actually, is that it? Yeah. As soon as we can get one male and one female, um, I will purchase them. Alright, so unfortunately, we... I don't know. I, I don't know what it is with the exhibit animals like i tried to get a tiger giant tiger land snail it's been like multiple days too i mean i haven't been watching it constantly for multiple days but like it's been a while and there was only that one female in the trade set like in the trading at all so if you have any idea why that is or what i can do to get the exhibit animals easier let me know but yeah i don't know it just seems like maybe it's just availability but i figured to end off this episode i would just do a little walkthrough because while i was waiting i did finish up some decorating and that kind of thing so uh let's just take a look so i did put in the one uh giant tiger land snail <laughs> and uh, i don't know where she is um but yeah i don't see her from this angle um but maybe we'll go and take a look at her a little bit closer later so this one is our Goliath Beetles, should be in there somewhere. And yeah, this place is bumping so far, we have a lot of guests. So you can see in here I kind of did a little bit um, of decorating, I got rid of that fountain because it was driving me nuts. Um, and I kind of decorated this side a little bit more so that it sort of matches the decor going on here. I don't know but that is why that's not connecting. <laughs> I can figure that out later. Um, but yeah, let's start over here. So I put in a couple of education boards just to, you know, get that rating up a bit. We've got a bunch of aloes and century plants. And here I changed this to a little uh, meerkat fun facts board. I just stole these from the internet, um, so I don't actually know how accurate they are. Uh, I just literally copy and pasted it and then made this. Um, I copy and pasted the text, I made the actual board. And this is a picture of one of our meerkats, but yeah, that's just kind of, I mean, if you want to read those, you can, but I didn't write them, so <laughs> I'm not sure that I really want to read through that. Um, of course, here are our milkshakes. Uh, we added in a little desert scene over here that was cute. And back here, I made these little boards for all of our meerkats. So <laughs> I just kind of, I made a lot of this up too. Uh, birthday, favorite food, fun fact. Uh, for each of our four meerkats, we've got Usa, Simbarche, and Ruku, Rukuzo. Rukuzo? Something like that. <laughs> and uh, those are actually images of each of them. I do kind of find, I don't know, I find these screens really light up my images. I need to remember to like darken them before putting them onto these screens because they make them way brighter. But uh, yeah, so these are just the regular education boards. And of course, this is the view of our meerkats. There they are. Oops, we don't want to jump over the fence. I don't know where they're headed to <laughs> all in a line like that. But uh, oh, wait, you know what? Mm, did I put food bowls in here for them? I might not have put food bowls in there for them. Okay, that's something that I might need to do. 
<laughs> Whoops. Anyway, they haven't been complaining, so that should be fine. So you come out here and I put in some zoo maps. So obviously we don't have much on our map right now, uh, but this is the same sort of thing. It's also brighter than I wanted it to be. I'll be I will darken it for the next time, but something that I want to do is update these maps every single episode. So we'll just kind of see the zoo grow from here. Probably that entrance is probably too big <laughs> to scale right now. Um, but yeah, just the same thing on both sides here. And it does seem like people don't walk through the screens as badly as they were walking through the fountain. So she's obviously standing in it a little bit there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, overall, it isn't, yeah, you walk through it. Okay, well, you know, it's not as bad anyway. Um, our information booth is just incredibly popular right now. And this, of course, is our gift shop. So we've got uh, loony balloons in this cute little plate shop. I think I'm gonna cover this. I think it would make more sense if this was all indoors. Um, I think? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens when we come to make this area next episode. So I think next episode we're gonna do... I do want to do this to be kind of a, a transitional walkway. So we'll have some cute water features in here and uh, maybe a few more booths because we still don't have a bathroom. We still don't have any food. Uh, so we'll have to put those in to, you know, this entrance area. And then our next animal, I think... You should be watching out for the rhino next episode. I think I want to do the new, uh, the d new African rhino. Um, can't remember what it, is it the African rhino or white rhino or something, but yeah, that's what it looks like. So, um, as always, let me know in the comment section below what you're thinking, what how you feel about the zoo so far. Uh, what are you looking forward to? What would you like to see? Uh, obviously, we're going to be kind of focusing on. The new Africa pack for a little while, but also I'm down for other desert animals and especially other African desert animals that were already in the game. Um, and I do have some plans, but I'm obviously always open to suggestions. I do want this zoo to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more gimmicky than my previous zoo. You can kind of tell already it's very dressed up and very themed. So I have a few theme ideas in mind, but if you have any others that, um, well, I mean, I haven't told you what they are, but <laughs> if you have any theme ideas uh, that you think would go well in the desert, let me know in the comment section below. And just as a reminder, if you are into uh, Minecraft or The Sims or, you know, other kind of running games like that, or you just like me and want to see more of my videos, I have two other channels that are just kind of starting up. I've just decided recently to uh, restrict this channel to only being Planet Zoo. So if you want to check those out, they're in the description box below and linked on my channel. You can find them there and I will talk to you in the next episode.